This is gonna be a little different video than what I've done in the past. I'm always blending glazes, making different colors, layering. I'm gonna do something today, just for an example, so you guys can see this. But this, I'm gonna do one, one single glaze on here. And some of these Amico glazes, they do beautiful by themselves. You don't have to always figure out a mix or a layer or anything. What I've got here is some soup bowls I'm working on. It's got my nice little peace sign in it. They're just grooved at the bottom to catch this flux glaze. And I am using a Mako soft fan brush. This is a number eight. And you can see how wide that is. It holds a lot of, a lot of glaze. And this is uh, Kentucky Mud Works Dark Star. So it's a real light uh, clay. These have been bisque fired to cone four and it's gonna have some speckling in it. And I'm going to do nothing but the honeydew. This is a new Amico Flux Glaze PCF 18. And I've got almost, uh, I got two really good layers in here. I'm gonna put this on pretty heavy because I want this really nice, uh, nice shine on this thing and it's it's killing me not to put something around the rim something like a a seaweed or a blue or something that's just going to run a little bit or put a top edge on it but i'm going to force myself not to do it uh oftentimes simple is better and sometimes it's not but you know you can get some beautiful pieces out of just doing uh some simple stuff so I'm taking this, I'm just loading this thing up and I am laying it in here because I know it's gonna move being a flux glaze. And I've seen some of this. I'd really like to try this. I bet on porcelain it would be just beautiful, uh, a real honeydew color. But I just got this, I opened this jar this morning. I've never used this before. And I'm trying to, I have a handful of pieces here that I'm trying to get done for Christmas. Everything I'm going to sell is pretty much uh, in the store. And this is stuff that either is either for gifts, these could go for sale, but I, I've got a pretty good feeling when they come out that they're probably going to end up in my kitchen cabinet. I've got a set of these that I've, I've posted before, some of those soup bowls. I've got some out in stores right now for sale but I've also got some in my kitchen and uh, we used them the other night. I'm trying to remember what it was for. It was just a soup or a chili or something, but the size is just great. I love the handle on these and they're just, you know, functional pottery is just a great thing to me. And when you make it and you use it, uh, you know, it just, it just feels good. It feels good in your hand. And uh, and I think you learn from it too. It's like, oh, I like this about it or I don't like that about it and I'm gonna change it. So keep some of the stuff you're making and, you know, try it out, use it for a while and see how it is. And then give it away if you don't like it or, hey, so, not saying give away the junk, but you know, sometimes people want stuff that you don't want. There's things I don't like. So I'm gonna do a little bit of drying on this. Okay, and then I'm gonna put a coat on the outside. I put three coats on it. And again, you can see how I've grooved these. I, I'm big on trimming and grooving and then putting that little edge in there. That'll catch this. The flux is gonna run and you want it to move a little bit depending on if you're layering or not. But uh, I'm just gonna to try to, to get this on there. You guys can, if you wanna see how I'm doing it, uh, I'm sure you have other ways of doing it, but. I'd highly recommend these Mako fan brushes. These just hold some glaze and they'll go on here uh, really nicely. This is a pretty thin glaze, uh, kind of like, not. I don't think it's quite as thin as seaweed is, but it's, it's rather thin. You gotta be careful not to drip it. See how that brush just loads up. And I still use a lot of these, you know, these little wooden imports. They, they work great for some things, 
But if I have a bigger item like these bowls, I will, uh, especially a large item, if you can, I've got this flower pot to do today and I can guarantee you I'll be using this big Mako fan brush on it. But someone was asking too about how much clay I use for these soup bowls. And I'll tell you, I was using, uh, I believe it was a pound and six ounces. And uh, these are a little bigger. I was wanting them bigger. Uh, I like the smaller ones and they're nice. I think I may have gone to like uh, eight ounces, a pound and eight ounces on these. So it's just kind of experimenting. I like to have kind of a heavy bottom on them so that they, uh, they sit good and you don't want them too thin because you don't want them to, you know, lose heat real quick. I don't think about that sometimes, but my wife is pretty quick to say, you know, if it's too thin, it's not gonna hold heat. She, she likes to keep that heat in her drink. Cause when you start out, I think that's something you do. You try to, oh, how thin can I go? At least I did. Cause you kinda, when you first start throwing, you know, Okay, I said it, it's clunky. It's it, it it's a big old chunky piece sometimes and you can still be proud of it. Uh, but as you get better, you look back on it and go, wow, that's just uh, not what I, not what I'm doing now and it was clunky. So you get better, practice. Nothing beats experience and uh, you know, technique has a lot to do with it. And everybody sometimes has a different technique. We all use different ways of doing things. So it's not like it's got to be done exactly. I see people throw in ways that I'm like, how in the world do you twist and contort to do it that way? But it works for them. So I'm not gonna tell them they're doing it wrong but there are certain things that you'll learn that you have to do, you know, which hand to use with which way the wheel's spinning and things like that. It makes a difference. I haven't done any throwing videos very much, just a couple, and I haven't really done any instructional stuff on that, but uh, I guess I could if anybody was interested. I'm not really a teacher. I'm more of a, a hobbyist here, but I have people ask me if I will give lessons. Obviously, I'm just a hobbyist. I'm not a business. I don't want people coming out and expecting me to teach. I don't want to teach. I want to teach. I think, guess I would I'd go to another. A lot of studios around here would probably be looking for teachers. And they'd be happy to, to let me assist with that. But not my gig. Tell you what, we're back here in Arkansas. Uh... We spent Thanksgiving in Pensacola Beach and it was just the wife and I in a nice little condo uh, at the end of Pensacola Island. And it was dandy there. And then I came home and I had to get used to this cool weather again. There was one day when it was in the 70s, they had the beach chairs and the cabanas out I'm talking like the day before Thanksgiving, the day after. It was the day after Thanksgiving is what it was because they were doing pictures of uh, kids with Santa on the beach. And there was a big turnout and it was warm. And uh, tell you what, we weren't in Arkansas anymore, Dorothy, or Kansas. If you guys know, I think there was... I was seeing on the news at the time that Kansas was actually getting some snow uh, while we were down there. It was a little bit farther up north than what we are, but here I am back at home in the old studio making videos. So I'm going to dry that one, get that off. I tend to melt my mat if I'm not careful. You'll learn to be careful with that. Okay. 
Got that. Clean this thing up a little bit. And then what I'll do with that is I will flip it over. And instead of going around, I'll do some. It's good to mix your directions going up and down. This will help a lot with getting an even uh, brushing on it. Sometimes you go around and then the next coat go up and down like this using that technique. Does tend to make things go on better. I like to dry the inside first and then I can stick my hand in there if it's not too hot. And I hope you can see that. I do appreciate the feedback. I've had some questions and uh, a lot of comments lately that I've been able to respond to. And if you have questions, uh, I, I try to respond to every comment. And uh, so feel free to ask questions or just give me a comment on whether you got anything out of the video, like the video, didn't like the video, uh, more information that you're needing. I'll tell you what I know, and sometimes that's a little and sometimes that's a lot. We'll just have to see what the question is. I got a little concerned. I got up this morning and I had some people across the street from me with chainsaws. Woo. I like being out here alone, and sadly they're building some houses again. So, And it was just some older gentlemen I've talked to before cutting some dead wood over here. But I'm afraid they're going to end up putting a house over here. And then looking out my window will be somebody's driveway instead of the woods where the deer come across and all. Way too much growth here. Uh, if you're familiar with Northwest Arkansas, I moved here in 1970. Okay, yeah, I'm old. And uh, the population of Bentonville at that time was somewhere, I think, between four and 8,000, four and six, something like that. And it was a really small town. You knew everybody. Now, this is the home of Walmart Stores Incorporated and their home office is here. And it was a, it was a little budding company at that time. And everybody I went to school with, their parents either worked for them or knew them or worked in the stores or they were executives or buyers or something. And uh, it has now turned into obviously the behemoth that it is. And uh, my wife and I both met Sam several times as the company was coming up and we both worked there. We have a little over 50 years, I guess, or just under 50 years combined employment there. So there we go. One more time. All right, I want to do one more coat on the outside of this. And then it's going to be done. And uh, I've got one more to do, which I'm not going to. I'm not going to film the second one. It's going to be the same way as this one was. It's just getting glaze on it, single color. Get it on nice and heavy. Then I'm going to wipe away. I'll show you. I'll try to finish this one up and show you how I wipe away that bottom and get that little lip on it. But uh, I like these and it's, it is that time of year for chili and soup. We have a couple of grandkids out of the eight that we have, but the oldest ones, they come out every week for dinner. Uh, and we all sit around and play games and we have a good time. And tonight's chili night. We tend to make all kinds of things. I'm a cook. My wife likes to bake. And of course the kids like to eat, so. Yeah, in Pensacola, I'll tell you, we would, if, if you go to Pensacola, you gotta go to Joe Patty's. 
Joe Patty's Seafood. And it's not not the restaurant, but the, but the, the fish market. Oh my gosh. They have everything in the world you would want there. And some of you have probably been there that are watching this video and you'll know what I'm talking about. But we ate five pounds of shrimp while we were there. I bought scamp, uh, mahi. What else did we have? Red snapper. We just, we tend to, we go out once in a while, but I love to cook and, and we'll just stay in at the condo and cook and sit on the balcony and watch the ocean roll in and the sun set. And uh, Joe Patty's makes the food good while we're there because they, they sell us the best, freshest. They've got a nice little wine store that's attached uh, with someone that's very experienced in there. And then they have a little, okay, they have everything you need including dessert besides the fresh food all you got to do is cook it when you get home or they'll they'll steam it and season your shrimp while you're there too but somebody local uh, makes pies and if you're a key lime pie person i am and my wife they have the best key lime pie it's not overly sweet it has a wonderful flavor and every time we roll into town, uh, that's one of the first things we pick up is one of those pies to stick in the fridge to nibble on through the week after dessert or after dinner. Sit on the porch and have a cup of coffee or a glass of wine and, you know, but I don't get much better than that. I'm about to stick this bowl in a big glob of glaze. There we go. All right, and you probably saw me when that was fast forwarding a while ago. I got this edge messed up just a little bit when I flipped it over a little too early when it was wet. So I'm trying to get some extra glaze on the lip because I want a good coat there. And it is gonna be so hard for me not to put some kind of extra color here on the top, but I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna let these things go. I'm gonna see how this single color honeydew which is the flux glaze again, is gonna do here. So Amico, it's all up to you to make these gorgeous because all I'm doing is putting one coat of your glaze on here. And very seldom do you fail me. The only time you failed me lately is by discontinuing Ancient Copper. And oh gosh, I know we've all heard way too much about that, but I still have two jars of it and I'm, I got it hidden. I'm using it just very sparingly on certain projects that I want to keep it on. So, all right, we're going to dry that and then I'll show you how I wipe that away at the bottom. And then the next time you'll see it is when it comes out of the kiln. So let's, uh, let's get it going here. All right, that one's pretty well done. And I'm gonna clean it up, set it on the shelf while I finish the last one. I've got a couple of vases I'm working on too. Uh, and we'll do some single colors on that. Anyway, right here. This is the tricky part is that little groove and I don't know if you'll be able to see it because it's just really, really thin that I put this little bitty cut right on the edge and I take that. Can you see? I don't know if you can see how I'm doing that, but just come right around that bottom of it and that little cut where I got that flat spot and I take that glaze off right there. If you can see that little bitty cut right there, and that's usually all I leave on it, that bear right there. And I don't have a problem with them uh, running off on the kiln shelf or anything. Now I'm not, I've never used this one, but I know it's the same base 
that they use for uh, honey flux. It's just got some color in it because I've seen that question asked before. And they use the same base for honey flux and all these other flux glazes like River Birch. And I really haven't had a problem. They make glazes flow together really well. But I've done some bigger pieces and I have not had a problem with them running off the pot. I'm not saying I won't have or you won't have because there's always that possibility. But so far I've been able to keep them close to the bottom. They didn't run off the pot. Sometimes we get nervous and we just try to take a little more than we have to. And I know you got to be careful, but it can be the difference between a nice piece and just too much glaze taken away at the bottom because of fear of it running. I'm about to wear out my sponges here. I'm going to have to buy some more. But anyway, there we go. It's that little bit of cut right there on that edge. Wipe it away nice and smooth. Cut. Sometimes it gets a little bigger, you know. Believe it or not, every piece of pottery isn't exactly perfectly round. And so when you trim it, or it didn't get centered well when you were trimming it, so that little cut can be just a little bit bigger in some areas than others. All right. There's that. Honeydew. I got two other little pieces I'm working on. I'll show you real quick. I've already done them. I don't remember exactly what I did to all of it here, but I think I did. This is one of my little Arkansas mugs that I do. I put indigo float, uh, two coats on it, and then I put textured turquoise, another two coats on top of it. And I believe right around the top, I did it right up here. I put seaweed. You can see there's a, it's almost the same color uh, as tur the textured turquoise, but I put seaweed up here pretty heavy on the rim to try to get a little bit of flow on it. And uh, we'll see how that turns out. And I had my cousin come over and she bought a vase as a Christmas present from somebody. And she said, mushrooms are hot. Y'all tell me, are mushrooms hot this year? She does cake decorating. And she said she does a lot of mushrooms and people are loving mushrooms right now. I have no idea how this is gonna come out. This is uh, my first wing at it. Uh, this is actually snow, Amico snow. I don't have it handy here, so I'm not sure what number it is, but it's Amico snow. I put Albany slip brown and uh, I mixed in a couple of different colors from, who am I talking about here? Coyote. I love coyotes really red. That's what I put up here. And uh, I also like their eggshell. It's a real flat. I buy it in five pound dry and mix it in buckets. But I didn't know how to do this. What I ended up doing was I put white in these little holes that I poked in this. And then I covered the whole thing with red. And then I got this bright idea. I took a drill bit just by hand and I just went right in there like that, you know. There, there's one of my little hand signals that I do, my little hand movements. But what I ended up doing was I, I just took the red right off the top and then I took this little brush that I have around here somewhere. I don't know what I did with it. I don't see it right now. Oh, there it is. I dipped the end of it in the white. You can see there's still a little bit of white on it. And then I just I very carefully brought it over here and filled those holes like that. And get it back over here where you can see it. And I just dipped them in there and let that fill in. And then here I did the Albany Slip Brown and I did a little bit of that uh, eggshell and then a little bit more on top. I don't, I don't know what this is gonna do. These are both fairly stable glazes. And so it may just be this spotted brown ugly thing. But I've got these two mugs that I'm wanting to take uh, to a Christmas party. 
and if they don't turn out, these are gonna be gift cards, okay? So I have a fallback, which is gonna be a gift card, and if they turn out good, somebody's gonna get some nice mugs. There we go. All right, y'all be good, have happy holidays. I'll post this as soon as I get it out of the kiln. I'm gonna finish these other bowls. I'm gonna fire that kiln today, and it is actually Monday the 4th of December. So if I get a chance, and I'll have to do it quick because I got a party this weekend, I'll uh, finish this video and get it up there um, before the weekend. So have fun, enjoy, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and throw me some comments. All right, these are out of the kiln. And this is our honeydew that I talked about. I did this one color on Kentucky Mudworks Dark Star. Uh, it's Honeydew PCF 18. And I just did them like that with that one color. We got a little bit of break in here. You see that little line that I always talk about around the edges. It gave us some nice speckling. This is a really beautiful soft green frosted uh, almost, it's a little lighter than what I would think is mint, but it is, it's like a honeydew. It's just, it's a real pretty uh, color. It's the Flux Glaze from Amico. And those are, those are nice big mugs. I know it's probably hard to tell. I have these massive hands here, uh, but that's a nice little set right there. And they turned out really nice. It didn't flow off. I'll try to show you that little bead that I was wiping away right there. You can see real close, but it did just great right there and uh, just stopped at the kiln shelf. So that was perfect. <coughs> really pretty glaze, I'll try that. Here's the other two that I had. Uh, I did do a little bit more to this. This was uh, downpour with textured turquoise on top and then I put that band of seaweed around it. Before I stuck it in the kiln, I actually put a bead or probably two two or three little coats of obsidian right around the lip. And then I put more seaweed on it just to get some more run. And look at those colors. I, uh, we've got blues and reds that came out of there. We've got the green up in here. See, it blended really well. I did the same thing on the inside. I don't if you can see that. Real pretty. This is a pretty mug. And... Uh, yeah, turned out good. The little mushroom mug with snow. Again, these are these are all with the Kentucky Mudworks uh, Dark Star. I got a little bit more red in my in my holes than or, than I wanted. I wanted these to be more defined, uh, but it did fill in a little bit. But it's still pretty mug. I thought the stem turned out nice. I wasn't sure how that was going to work with. Albany slip brown and then the the coyote eggshell kind of mixed in together in here but with the dark star clay we got a neat speckle in here and yeah got that little piece sign I stick in the handle most of the time and it's a pretty mug it's a nice mug somebody will be happy to open that on Saturday the only other thing I've got here is, is I had a couple little vases I threw in there this was one I made and I kind of played with it, shaped it. I threw it on the wheel and then I cut a section out of it and gave it a different shape right there. But that's your river birch. And you can see how that just does so nice. Again, it, it was really close to the edge, but it doesn't run off. It just doesn't run off. It, uh, it just settled right in there. And then this is one, this is a coyote glaze, but this is, uh, Crazed copper, and I really like the color on that. And then I used, I had this, I did it, I cut it open, another vase I threw, and then shaped it, and I made it look like it was stitched with metal kind of right in here. Just sometimes when I'm playing, I just, you know, you create. But this one, this one got stuck a little bit. See that drip? I didn't realize I had it on there so heavy. It wasn't, it didn't hurt anything. And I'll take my little sander and just buzz that bottom off. But that's a neat one to try. If, if you try any of the Coyote Glazes, uh, crazed copper, and it comes out a really pretty turquoise like that. So anyway, Honeydew by Amico. 
on these mugs. Turned out great. Give it a shot. You'll love it. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoy these videos and it helps you make better pottery and at least uh, maybe use a few less test tiles. And uh, have a happy holiday. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.